This is Stephen Harper. You may recognize him as the current Prime Minister of Canada. Mind you, based on the recent rebranding of the Government of Canada as the Harper Government, you could be wrong. He seems to see himself as the apparent czar of Harperland. He's grown so lazy, so passionless, that he's reusing 2009 attack ads against Michael Ignatieff. I suppose it wasn't very easy to find new statements to take out of context to try and warp the minds of Canadians. Then again, those warped minds are arguably his strongest supporters. But rather than attack over Lord Harper, why don't we look at the Conservative record? Record bankruptcies have been recorded under the Harper government. Record unemployment has persisted under the Harper government. A record lockout of the media in order to manipulate the conservative message into something more palatable for Canadians who do not support his leadership. A record deficit that has been worsened by a completely unnecessary stimulus package branded as Canada's Economic Action Plan. As a Canadian, I don't recall being consulted about my economic policies or practices, so this can hardly be considered a representative action plan in my best interest. But how about yours? Record tax cuts for corporations run by Canada's wealthy elite, including some influential non-Canadians, while the middle class and poor continue to carry the burden of supporting those corporations from the ground up. Some record, isn't it? Now, let's consider the attack ads. Michael Ignatieff suggested that a change to the GST would be considered amongst all viable ways to minimize federal debt and increase job creation. Harper missed that part of it. Michael Ignatieff, unable to secure lucrative work in his own nation, was forced to seek opportunities in other nations. Are Michael J. Fox, Wayne Gretzky, Celine Dion, William Shatner, Pamela Anderson, Mike Myers, or Glees Corey Monteith less Canadian for working in the U.S.? Brian Adams lives in Europe. Is he less Canadian? Michael Ignatieff is a man whose work elsewhere makes him unequivocally qualified to lead a nation on the international stage. But Harper missed that part of it. Michael Ignatieff considered defeating the Harper government with a coalition of opposition parties. He considered it. But he didn't do it because he didn't feel it was the right decision to do so. He considered the best interests of his nation and its leadership before taking action. Stephen Harper missed that part of it too. So what else is Stephen Harper missing? For a man who wields a heavy, controlling administration of the members of his party, people he seemingly doesn't trust to speak their own minds or voice their own opinions without his prior authorization and oversight, Stephen Harper is surprisingly willing to criticize the actions of others. I think Stephen Harper, the leader of the Conservative Party of Canada, the leader of the Harper government, needs to look within. But wouldn't you agree? A majority of voters, that is coincidentally also a minority of all eligible Canadian voters, support Stephen Harper and the Harper government. But if you do a few hours of reading and spend half an hour at the ballot box, your voice can help to redefine the direction of this nation. Your voice can help shape Canada's future. A little time and a little effort is all it will take. Where will you be on Election Day?